Welcome back to Advent of Code Day 14. Let's see what we have today. Um, so today we're talking about bit masks. So giving a quick look, we basically have a number in input and we give and or or and this is shifting the bits. We can give XOR as well. And basically the bit mask that we're going to have is this kind of stuff. There are three values, x, one, and zeros. The x mean that you just take the original value, no problem. One means that you override the value with a one, and zero means that you override the value with a zero. So we're going to have to pass this kind of data. So I'm pasting that here, and here, as usually, we have our full input here. Uh, I'm wondering if we should make this, yeah, I think we should make this uh, program a proper class, you know. Sometimes I feel a bit lazy and I'm like, mm, you know, maybe we shouldn't make this a program, but you know, it's best to make this a proper program. So here we're gonna have something um, called this that code is equal input. We are we going to pass that? Yeah, I think I think I'm going to make it run here right away, and we're going to pass each line. So this is not really complex uh, setup. We just have to create new program, and here comes p equal new program p dot run. And I don't know exactly what we want in the end. So oh, we need to have also a memory. Sorry. There is something that they say about memory. So memory, what I'm wondering is how many rows of memory. So I don't think I don't do they tell us how much memory there is in a program. There is memory of eight, but hmm. How long is the memory? Is that just like memory eight? Uh, so here we know that the memory is at least eight uh, integers long. You know what? I think we should just dive in the input puzzle just to make sure we understand this correctly. Memory, we have huge numbers for the memory here. So we don't want, because the numbers are so huge, I don't think there will be like 63,000 numbers. That would be super huge. So what we're gonna do, the memory is gonna do, is gonna be a map, new map. And it's gonna be a, an integer to an integer. That's gonna be it. And of course the memory is zero, uh, is initialized to zero. And at the end we need to do the sum of all values left in the memory. Um, so we're gonna do a little refresher on the map. How do you, so you could do a for each, you could do, you could get all the values uh, and do a reduce on the values. I think, I think we're gonna do that, you know. So uh, get sum, we're gonna do this that memory, dot um, I was saying values dot reduce a b a plus b and we initialize that to zero and we return that and here we can log uh, p dot get sum so that's going to be um, the end result we can run this um, just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes anywhere for now okay values what is values Oh, values might be a near iterator object. So that's my bad. So we're just gonna say um, let result equal zero this dot memory dot for each v and we're gonna say result plus equal v and here we return result. Uh, although in for each, what do we get when you do a for each? In a map, you get 
value key and map okay so that is good this is the value you sum that so now we're good now we can focus on the interesting part of the program which is going to be running this so first of all we're going to need to pass things um, so in order to pass um, let's see we need to check if this is map mask Hmm. So we're going to need to check uh, if it starts with, uh, what is it again, mask. Uh, so by the way, we need to, of course to go through each line. This dot code for each line. And here we can say if the line is starting with mask, in that case, we know this is a mask. Otherwise, we know this is a memory. So here we need to say const groups is equal to, um, actually, let's just copy paste one line. Oh, just one line here. And we're going to create a regular expression here, starting at zero, ending here and here this should be uh, something several times and we're going to capture that with a parenthesis and we're going to call that uh, the mask so this thing one more time uh, i've done that a couple of times in this in this series this is uh, helping us name this capture group and we're going to execute that on the line. And here we know um, groups.mask is going to be our mask. So we can actually log it just you know, for starters, group.mask. And here we're going to do another regular expression here. This is, of course, going to be different. What are we going to put in here? We're going to put this kind of stuff. We want to put, okay, so here the square bracket is a specific, a special character, so we have to escape it, uh, otherwise that would be bad. And this several D's is gonna be the address. And this is gonna be the, um, how are we gonna call that? Actually, it's just, it should be just zeros and ones. Let's just put uh, any digits, just in case, um, just to make sure I don't do any mistakes. Because you don't want your regular expression to be too restrictive some, sometimes, it could be bad. Um, okay, in that case here, uh, this is not the address, this is the value actually. Value, so here we can log, groups. Sounds good. Let's just run this. Uh, we have here the group.mask. So actually, let's just make, put groups here. We have a uh, mask that is this value and then the address that is this. So when we get a mask, what I'm thinking, and this is where the fun part is starting, uh, I'm thinking we store two things. So when we get a X, X means we just, uh, if this is uh, a one, we return a, a one. And if we get a zero, we return a zero. When we get a one in the mask, if, so I'm saying when we get a one here in the mask, uh, and here, if we get a one, this is still a one. But if we get a zero, this is a one. And if we get a zero in the mask, it is always zero. So like that. So what I'm thinking, uh, it would be a bit painful, you know, to go through um, everything. So I think we're gonna store something. Uh, we need to store a value and actually do a proper masking. 
I, I don't think that's that's worth the trouble. So what I was thinking is that we could uh, split that mask into um, a actual bit mask. But I think we're just gonna you know do it simple way. We just uh, take the mask and say this dot mask equal this. Yep. So we store the mask basically, and when we have a memory, we're gonna say this dot memory dot set uh, groups dot address, and the value is gonna be uh, changed by the mask. So here, this is where fun stuff is gonna happen to the value. Uh, value is gonna be groups dot value. Then we're gonna say. This is gonna be set. Actually, we need this two string base two, and then we need to split that into a list of characters. So we have one and zeros, and then for each of those, oh, so we're gonna do a map here. Uh, so this is gonna be um, value and index. And for each of this is character of this value, we're going to check if uh, this dot mask of index. We're going to do a switch actually. Let's do a switch here because we have three cases. So I feel like I feel like doing a switch. So in the case we have a nix. In that case, we just return. Cannot spell. We just return the original value. In the case we have, actually, this is simpler. If uh, is equal to x, return value. Otherwise, we we'll return uh, the mask. And that's going to be as simple as that. I know why I'm trying to make things uh, more complex than they are. Um, so this is let value. So this is the value uh, as a string. So we just sorry as an array of characters that are either zeros and one or ones. And now we can say value the join. Actually, we can join it here. Let's join it here. And here we just have to pass int value base two. So we basically are going to store, uh, we are going to store decimal numbers in the map. And that, that is it. I think that is it. I don't see any other, <laughs> I'm trying to make things more complex than it looks maybe. Uh, however, it looks like I am getting five and I should get 165. Hmm, that's interesting. So, um, so here we're gonna say let string, and here we're gonna say let value equal uh, like that. So here we can log groups that address and value. Actually, instead of doing that, you know what? In the end. Let's reread this part. So here we have our value, and we are overriding some elements in this value because of the mask. Here, this is eight. Here, I try to write z zero to address eight. Okay, so. I think in the end here, before doing this, we should uh, log the this dot memory. We're going to log the map. Oof, this did not work. Here I need to put string. My bad. This was a quick change, and it did not work. Okay, so here on the position eight, it is zero. 
it looks like it, not every line came through so Eleven, even okay. So here, I think let's do that again. So we should have three in the position eight. Here, no, this is seventy-three. So this is not correct. Mm, so I'm starting to think that the mask is not correct. Um, so here, let's put the mask. This the mask here. Oops, forgot a comma. Let's check this. Okay, so if this is equal to x, then we return the value. Otherwise, we return the this in there. So, mm, this is getting interesting. I'm, go I'm starting to output a lot of things. <laughs> Far too many things. Okay, string here. Okay, okay, okay. We've got an issue and I see what it is. When we do a two string here, we just get a couple of characters. We just get these characters basically. And we want to make sure there are uh, that many characters. And actually, I don't know how many characters is that. Length, 36 characters. It must have been written somewhere in the print statements. But here I need to uh, pad start uh, 36 with zeros and this will enable us to have like a nice long um, string and we have in the end 133 which I don't think is the right answer still. So we're going to be doing things one step at a time. So. Let's actually use that here. We're gonna console uh, dot log this, and we're gonna console dot log uh, this here. So basically, we're not gonna care about the mask. We're just gonna be displaying before applying the mask and after applying the mask. So after applying the mask, we have one followed by one, two, three, four, five zeros and one. One, okay, so here you can see that there is an issue. Hmm, there's an issue already at the beginning. Sheesh. I am not understanding everything. So, this is the original value that you get is three, but this is not, oh yes, this is three, 11. And we should, yeah, actually that's, that looks correct. So I think I understand, uh, from my understanding, this looks correct. The prem then start by specifying. Yeah, so that is correct. The prem then attempts to write the value 11 to memory address eight. Oh, my bad. You know what I've, I've done? I've done a big mistake. I thought that this was binary, but this is decimal number. So that was the mistake. So here we don't want to... Uh... Yeah, actually. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm lost. I'm <laughs> starting to be more and more lost. Okay, so I think here, yeah, 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 okay, I get it, I get it. Let decimal is equal to pass int groups.value. And this is my problem, is that I have a string here and a string there. This is not good, not good, not good. Let address, let's make the right types right away. 
so that we make no mistake afterwards. And here we have decimal, and here we have decimal. Groups that, so here this address. Okay, so I think we should have the correct thing. So this was a type issue. We have 165. So I've spent a bit of time struggling on this because of a type issue. So yeah, maybe I should do TypeScript once and for all, you know. <laughs> uh, so we have the right result here. 165, so let's get right in and get the full input. Have this huge number. Let's see. Yes, let's get right into part two. Okay, so this one is quite interesting. So remember we had a mask here and this was modifying the value here. But now the mask is modifying the address. So we're gonna make a copy basically of what we had previously. We're gonna take that. I'm gonna store it here to make sure we have a simple use case to, for starters, simple test scenario. And we're gonna copy this program here. And we're gonna say, uh, how, how should we call that? version two, so let's go call it program two. You know that I don't like, I don't really like the program two because it means that here I need to remember to put twos everywhere and this is often something that I forget, so that's not something that I advise, but yeah, you know, this is how, this is what it is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove, oh wait, we want to keep the mask, right? The mask is gonna stay in there. So it's good to have the mask set up. Uh, it's good to have this parsing here set up as well. Uh, we want to keep the address and the decimal. And here, this is where things are gonna get interesting. So here, decimal is gonna stay the same, but the address is going to be changing. We're going we're gonna need to create a bunch of addresses depending on uh, what is in the mask. Mm. So, I think I'm gonna create something to create all combinations possible because this is basically so, something about creating combinations. Uh, so, combinations uh, between Zero and n, I, I believe. Uh, so const max. So what we want to do is we want to create all combinations for two x. So here, notice that the combinations are for two x is going to be zero 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 one one zero one one. So basically, we're going to go from zero in decimal numbers to uh, three in decimal numbers, right? We're gonna do the first output is gonna be zero zero, which is zero in decimal, uh, then zero one, which is one in decimal, one zero, which is three, and one one, we, oh wait, one zero, which is two, and one one, that is three. So basically, we want to get a pattern in binary, uh, and we can extract this from uh, generating decimal numbers. So for here, we have two, we want to generate a pattern in binary that is a uh, length of two, all possible combinations. And we're gonna have to do math, go from zero to four minus one. And so this is gonna be equal to two, two to the power of n plus one, I believe, minus one. So if we have two numbers, we need, two to the power of wait <laughs> i'm afraid to do a mistake if you have two numbers two to the power of two minus one if you have three numbers two to the i believe this is the right thing so here we're going to do basically a for a simple for loop or i, i below max, 
and then here we want also to create const result an array and here we want result dot push i dot two string base two and we want to pad start with the zeros to make sure it's at it's of length n. So we're gonna try this uh, little combinations function. Let's try that in the Node.js repl. Oh no, I have some copy paste issues here. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Let's actually give it a log here. Um, combinations of one it should be just uh, two options, I believe. Yeah, it should be two options, either zero or one. If you have two numbers, it should be four options. And we have those four options. So this is great. This is perfect. Oh yeah, here the minus one is in here. So we are good. Let's just check with three numbers. Yeah, this is exactly what I was expecting. So I'm really excited. This is great. Uh, yep. So our combinations function is ready. If you use another language, you might already uh, be using that. Uh, you, may, you might have like a better way, better way to do that. Uh, so here, this that combinations. We're gonna do that right away, right here. I'm gonna do this that mask that filter to make sure we only take x is equal to the big x the length and here we want the combinations of that so basically we count the x's and we can generate the combinations for these x's and here we can just reuse these combinations so uh, here we need to do this dot combinations dot for each uh, so this is this is exciting uh, combination really exciting so basically we're gonna need to say something like this that uh, memory that set something here um, okay, let's say something and here this is gonna be the decimal so here this something this address what is it gonna be so here the address we parse it as a decimal value and we need to uh, this binary address is equal to uh, address dot two string base two which gives us uh, a uh, string that we convert into an array and now we can iterate through each element of this array that's it yep uh, so let's um, address again I don't think it's I don't remember if that, that conflicts here I think that doesn't conflict but I might be wrong but we're gonna try it you know just to see if it works or not with the binary address dot map let uh, x position is equal to zero and basically here we return no 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 no. this is not binary address we need to iterate through the mask this dot mask and what do we if this is a zero in the end this is a zero one no 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 here this is the address, here this is the mask. So the mask, how do we apply the bit mask? So if this is a zero, we keep it unchanged. Okay, so zero, we keep it zero. If this is one, it is one. 
so. Okay. I, th I believe this is, so here, if zero is unchanged and one is overwritten with one, I believe this is uh, R or something like that. Yes, I think this is R, but because like, uh, this is a truth table that we need to write here. If you have as an input one and zero here, here you have one, here you have zero. We said uh, here this is our mask. If the mask is one, we said we want to overwrite it with one. So here this is one and one. If the mask is zero, it should be unchanged. So here one and zero. So this is our truth table, and basically this is the truth table of the R value. So we're going to be doing a R here. Um, so the map, we're going to check if x is equal to if x. No, let's call this v because x is weird. Because we so if the value of the bitmap is equal to x. In that case, we, re we push uh, combinations of x position plus plus return. Otherwise, we return, and here we have to do our and or, which is um, so in mask here, this is going to be. Need to make sure this is an integer, so pass int of v, and we have to say or. Oh, here we need the index as well, v and index, and here we want the value decimal. Wow, this is becoming a bit too crazy. No, we want the address, address. Address, okay, so here there is gonna be an issue, so let's call this A. <laughs> uh, address of index. No, binary address. Binary address of index, and we're gonna pass int as well. So basically, um, we're just gonna make sure that this is working. We're gonna say if we have one as the mask, if we put zero, this is one. If we put one, this is one. Yeah, so that's correct. It's overwritten with one. And if our mask is zero, we put zero or one, this is unchanged. So we are doing good. This is proven. And now here we need to a.join. So here we went through each element of the mask. If the mask is x, then we take one elements of the combination. Otherwise, we do an OR between those two values. And in that case, we have to join this string that is a string of zeros and ones. So we can actually do the join outside here in case we need debugging later on down the road. And here we're going to have to uh, A. Uh, this is going to be a binary string, so we're going to have to pass in a base of 2, because this is a decimal number, and now we get 408. Is that it? No, it should be, it should have been 208. That is not correct. Uh, but this is fine, you know, we're going to be checking this.
So here we're going to be displaying all of the address. So here we're going to say let's uh, pointer. Let's call that pointer instead. Here we know log. We're going to log the pointer. This is something that I can say does not look good. So I think we might have missed like um, a left pad. Like in the previous thing, you know, here we had to do a pad start. And I believe this is the same here. We missed the pad start for the binary address here. Binary address, we should make sure it is a 30, uh, yeah, 36 digits. The mask, it's always 36, 36 binary digits. And here, with this line, we have 208, which is looking exactly uh, like the value we were expecting. So now we can take the full data set, make it run. Oh, this is the best time of the day. Uh, so I believe I shouldn't console log. This is a bad idea here. So I'm gonna time out this program, remove the console log, and let it run. And now we have our answer right away. Is it the right one? Yes, it is. Thank you very much for the support in this uh, series. Please drop a like, uh, it means a lot to me. Um, it really helps the channel. Uh, yeah, feel free to drop a follow, a subscription if you haven't, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.